You've probably seen the amazing spoon dolls that Jill Willick does, and she does an awesome job. We've got a tutorial at Sculpt University where she teaches you how to put together a face like this. You just begin with a spoon, a wooden spoon, and then I actually wrap mine with paper tape so the clay will stick to it really well. I think Jill says to use some glue or such. I don't do that. I just use paper tape. And Liquid Sculpey is awesome for adhering clay to anything. So put down the, your paper tape, a little bit of Liquid Sculpey, and then just start sculpting. Same with when you add the ears. You can put in a little Liquid Sculpey and then use that to adhere the ears on. And then I will show you how to make the hands and assemble your doll. I hope with this project you'll really just relax and just have fun with it. It doesn't have nearly the amount of needing to be very, very precise that fairy sculpting has. So this is a time to just kind of break out and just have fun with it. Here's the doll head and I'll get her other hands sculpted and then I'll show you how we put the doll together in the next video. And I also wanted to let you know that I've got a few of these resin castings of this exact face that I've made. And I made these castings because I thought if I were sculpting it's easier to have something that's like 3D that you can look at and see, okay, here's the shapes I'm trying to get to. So anyway, these are available. If you're interested, go to makingfairies.com and you'll find them in the supplies. And I also have these little fairy ear stages that is another sculpting tool. It's something to help you look at and know what your shapes are supposed to be like when you're trying to make the ears. So it just takes you from just a regular piece of clay all the way up to how the ear looks. And I'll be making a video to go along with this too, so you know how to use it. So anyway, those are just some helps for you. I hope that you enjoy making your spoon doll. Be sure to go to SculptUniversity.com and you'll see the amazing tutorial by Jill Willick and she teaches you how you make the face for your spoon doll. To make your hands, the first thing you need to do is make a wire armature. So begin with some wire. This happens to be 22 gauge and you make loops for each of the fingers. Just like that and then just kind of squeeze them together. I'll just show you on a couple of them, but you would keep on looping, looping, looping. And then, so at the end, you have a bunch of loops. Now it's easiest if you just draw out on paper the size of hand that you want, that way you can match up your loops to the paper. But once you get your loops in place, you just twist down at the bottom, and then you cover this whole thing with paper tape. And if you have some aluminum foil tape, you can just take this, make a piece, wrap it around for the palm of the hand. Then you cover it all with paper tape, which is what I've done here. And then I like to, on each of the fingertips, just add a little bit of liquid Sculpey. That way you won't have any wire poking through and the fingertips will be rounder and easier to sculpt. So that's how you make a hand armature for your spoon doll. I have mine about typical hand size, maybe a little bit large. And then later we'll be attaching these to the spoon with some more wire once they are sculpted. For my hands, I'm going to be using a mix of three ounces Pro Sculpt, one ounce Primo Beige, and a quarter ounce of just some flesh cernet that I have. All right, to begin with these hands, I've just rolled my clay into about eight inch sheets. <laughs> and I'm just going to wrap each finger with a sheet. And I'm going to just do the fingers first because that will make it all easier to do. I've already made my armature be just a little bit smaller than the size that I want, but it's all the correct proportions. So I can just put clay on these fingers and know that it's already going to be the right size and everything. I want to make sure my fingers have a little bit of personality. I'm going to have them be a little bit bent.
and I want the tips to be wider than the rest of it. And I'm going to have them be kind of far apart from each other as I do this so they're easier to sculpt. So I'm going to kind of squeeze from the top and pull down. And then I'm going to squeeze down here lower too and pull up for the knuckle. You can do your fingers however you want. These are witchy fingers, so you can make them knobby, skinny, fat, just whatever you want. What I'm gonna go for is kind of a bigger fingertip, skinny where there's not a knuckle, and kind of extra knobby knuckles. You can even put a ball of clay on that knuckle if you'd like. So I'll get all the clay on all the fingers, just like that, and then we'll take it from there. This rubber tip tool is great for going in between the fingers. Oh.